Autumn Fest 2022 was initiated with the vision of bringing to fore the diverse and distinctive aptitudes of the Tetsu student community. It aims to explore and unearth the talents and hidden potential our students possess, providing them a platform to outshine and surpass their own limits and expectations, thereby ensuring that they are not only confined to the four walls of a classroom. Like the famous saying goes, students are not things to be molded, but are minds to be unfolded. Being a student here at Tetsu College, I am very much privileged to say that the college has been passionately working to strive for excellence, which is also its motto, not just in the field of teaching and learning, but also in its extracurricular activities that enable students to go beyond their limits and with the goal to create a keen spark of enthusiasm to bring impact in our very own land, Nagaland. First of all, from Tetsu family, I want to extend my warm words of welcomes to all of you who are present here. Today, we are going to celebrate Autumn Fest with the themes, the mellowing falls, the speeds on height. So, dear student, I firmly believe growth is not an vertical dimensions, it is a horizontal phenomenon. When growth happens, inclusiveness must happen. There is a saying that it is not how much you do, but how you do makes life uh, meaningful. At last, I want to say, group effort, ability to work in unisons towards a common goals, hard works, and dedications. Doing small, small things with laughs and fun, these are the true ingredients behind success of any greater institutions. And we sincerely hope and believe that reputation of Tetsu College continues to grow with the motto, strive for excellence, missions of the college, and the vision of the college that is to create positive in impact in the world. Thank you and looking forward for all the participants. Please, uh, it's my best wishes and give your best. Thank you. Tetsu College is very well known to be filled with artists in every single corner of the campus. Hence, to show a small fascinating glimpse of what talent hides within, I'd like to call upon Imli Wapang Waling from fifth semester and Zucha Ma from BBA first semester to mesmerize the audience with their talents. <laughs> And I 
Taking performance. Thank you so much, Mr. Imle Wapang and Mr. Zuchamo. For, okay, moving on. Before I give time to our respected special guest, Sir Kegwa Hun Teb, President of Naga Students Federation, I'd like to give a brief introduction of him. Well, firstly, he completed his postgraduate in finance and accounting. Sir Teb was the former president of Nagaland University Students Union education secretary of Naga Student Federation, NSF, and assistant professor of Morden College, Kohima, who is now the president of NSF Naga Students Federation. I extend my heartiest gratitude to you, sir, for taking out your precious time for us despite your busy schedule. Hey? Let me begin with a remark in the form of a story. My dear students, A story of a donkey and a tiger, or so to say, the ass and the tiger. One afternoon, near the river, the donkey met a tiger, and they started an argument, saying that the grass is blue in color, proclaimed the donkey. But the tiger replied, no, the grass is green in color. The discussion became heated and the two decided to submit the issue to arbitration so that they can approach the lion to take decision who is right. As they approach the lion on his throne, the donkey started screaming, Your Highness, isn't it true that the grass is blue in color? The lion replied, If you believe it is true, then the grass is blue in color. The donkey rushed forward and continued. The tiger disagrees with with the donkey, the king then declared, the lion declared, the tiger will be punished with three days of silence. Then the donkey jumped with joy and went on his way, content and repeating, saying, the grass is blue, the grass is blue. The tiger asked the lion, the king of the jungle, Your Majesty, why have you punished me? After all, the grass is green in color. The tiger asked, So why do you punish me? The lion replied, That has nothing to do with the questions of whether the grass is blue or green. The punishment 
is because it is degrading for a brave, intelligent creature like you to waste time arguing with an ace. And on top of that, you came and bothered me with that question just to validate something you already knew was right. To me and to all of us, arguing with a fool is just a waste of time. We are living in a world where time is money. My respect to Sir Kulu Lorin, the director, the faculty members, the students council leaders, my friend, the president, the Mapurnaka Students Union, and my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is always a privilege and honor for me to be in the midst of a students as a students leader. As I enter in this magnificent amphitheater this morning, I have lots of things in my mind where I want to express. But I will be short and brief where I may not able to touch on your theme, the beautiful theme which you have put forward for celebration and this Autumn Fest 2022. But taking this opportunity and privilege, kindly allow me to express few of the concerns which is confronting the Naga people and particularly the youths and students today. Just this morning, as I was going through the newspaper, I have seen the notification, an advertisement calling the notice and attention of the students to apply for scholarship. Let me ask all of you, my dear friends, how many of you or how many of us deserve to apply or to receive a scholarship? Five years back, Naga Students Federation started with a campaign, no false claim on scholarship. Today, Naga society, inclusive of all of us, we only know how to point our fingers. We only know how to point our fingers to those persons who are in the hands of affairs, whereas we don't know where are we standing. We don't know how polluted we are. We don't know whether we are right or wrong. We are talking about a system which is controlling all of us, which is in the operation. Let me remind all of you and let me beseech all my dear students here in this Tatsu College family, why don't from this year onwards, if you don't deserve, why, why don't you? Why? Why should you apply? I may sound rude because I was also a student where I don't deserved, but I got my scholarship. I received my scholarship from class 11 till my post-graduation. I must admit in front of all of you, as a student, scholarship amount which we receive you know, is uh, something which is very resourceful to all of us, particularly to those students who judiciously utilize the amount. But I can see Lots of my friends, even in our days, that as and when they receive a scholarship, the only desire, the only things in their mind is to enjoy. In a sense, in the other words, they fail to judiciously utilize. We are talking about changing the system. I appeal to all my dear students, 
from this year onwards, let us be a change. If you feel that you don't deserve, then kindly don't apply. In a year, more than 5,000 students qualified a bachelor degree in the state of Nagaland. Whereas the job opportunities and avenues available in the market to absorb our younger generation is limited to only not even more than a thousand in a year. Where are we heading towards? We are in a time where there are lots of people, or so to say, lots of employed in a government sector who has become a liability to our people, who has become a liability to the state, not because of anything else, but their entry into their job was wrong. Let me tell all of you, we are in a time where we need a right person for the right job. We need a right person for the right job. Just last night, I was discussing with one of them very successful leader. He told me that in his, among his colleagues, there were few of them who entered into the service without efforts, in a sense, window door or back door. And those are the people, or those are the employee who are not contributing, who are not, you know, who could not contribute anything because they, did, they enter into their service without any effort and for which with the change of time Naga Students Federation is the apex students body of the youths and the Nagas today we felt the needs that we have to able to come out with, a, with an examination board to recruit particularly class 3 or grade 3 level under one format and for which Today, with all our efforts together, we can see the reality that Nagaland State Staff Selection Board is into place. And I am very positive that under the board, NSSB, the right person will be placed for the job to contribute for our people. We are talking about meritocracy, fairness, justice, in the process of examination. We still have lots of hurdles. Let me admit before all of us, we have a reservation policy. We have this, this policy where it is manipulating and it is creating a problem in the minds of young people, particularly the students who are willing or who are keeping in the fore or who sees yourself to become someone, in, particularly in the government sector. Let me have the freedom to express to all of you that the prevailing reservation policy in the state of Naglan is not bringing equality, is not delivering equality to the people. Let me tell you why. Yes, in any given society, due reservation is required to ensure that the lower strata of the people can be elevated. However, the prevailing reservation policy is concerned in our state. The right person are not getting an opportunity. The right person, the, right, the deserving person are not getting an opportunity. We need not go into deeper. We need not go in depth, but I request all of you to kindly do a research because very soon, government of Nagaland has already agreed upon that reservation policy will be reviewed. I must tell all of you that 
all of us are manipulated. We are in a system where our minds are manipulated. I think, I think this is the right word. I have to put it. You know why we are manipulated? I think in any given society, a policy is formed based on the population census. We claim ourselves that we are an upright citizen, a Christian. How fair is our population census? Until and unless fair census is conducted, the formula for policy making cannot come into fruition. I believe that. We are talking about a population in the state of uh, Nagaland, a little more than 19 lakhs. How fair is our population census? As a youth, you know why I am mentioning all this is because we are the leader of today and we are the leader of tomorrow. Many great leaders say that youth are an asset for any nation. Many great leaders say that youths are the builder of any nation. But I am very doubtful whether our Naga youths are an asset or a liability to your family, to your community, and to the Nagas at large. How far you and I can or are contributing to our people is the question which you have, all of us have to answer today. You know why I am saying young people today have become a liability. May not be all of us, but some of us. From our birth till we get married, I think we have shifted our burden to our people. Sorry, to our parents. Let us be very practical in this approach. Your parents will give birth to you. Your parents will give education to you. After securing all the degree, all the certificates, you are not fit to serve or to be fitted in any sector, which has compelled your parents to cut up because they want their children to live a secured life. Your parents will be forced to give you a job. So they forcefully accommodate you in a government sector. Even after giving you a job, since you are careless, you want your parents to contribute in order to settle you down, to have a family of your own. Even after having arranged your family, your marriage, after having, after bearing a children or a child, you are very careless so you cannot take care of your children. So your parents, as a grandma and grandpa, they are compelled to come again and take care of your children. I think this is the reality we are facing today. I can see in almost every family. My dear students, I want all of you to change your mindset. I want all of you to be a contributor. I want all of you to be an asset and not a liability and not a burden to your family, to your community, and to the Naga people. When we go back to the history, we are very fond of proclaiming ourselves that we were uh, headhunters. We feel very proud to even comment that my grandparents, my grandfathers, were a head hunters. They hunt down their enemies. But in the process, 
I must tell all of you, my dear students, our grandparents, they were honest, they were hardworking, they were sincere in their daily activities as human beings. We have lost our ground today, including myself. We never bother to respect our teachers. Let me start. We never bother to respect our parents. We never bother to respect our elders. Where is our honesty today? We all want to corrupt. We all want to cheat. I think it is time for all of us, dear Naga friends particularly, my dear students, I think we have to be able to look back and inculcate all those moral values which was, you know, practiced by our elders, our forefathers in the bygone days. Let me give you three key words. Let us be hardworking, let us be honest, and let us be sincere in our approach as we live to survive at par with the rest of the world. Naga youths and entrepreneurship and self-reliance. I have a question for all of you. From time to time, I used to keep meeting the administrators and the decision makers. Whenever I meet them as a student leader, they used to give me a data where most of the trade licenses, or for that matter, even taxi licenses, the names are, all the names are Naga people. Whereas I see very less Naga entrepreneurs in the ground. Whereas I see very less taxi drivers, taxi owners in the field. So who is occupying our space? Is that because we are careless? Is that because we don't want to do work? Or is that because people have taken away, have taken away our job? The reason why I'm mentioning all these things is because very soon you will face the world where you will be compelled to survive in any manner. Why can't we see a taxi driver wearing a coat suit? You can become a graduate, you can become a taxi driver. I tell you, your earning will be much more than some of your teachers here. I'm not saying to degrade your teacher's salary here. But that is the reality. There is a scope, but we are not censored in our approach. So I tell you, my dear friends, we have to prepare as you are here in this prestigious institution. I want all of you to prepare yourself mentally, physically, intellectually to face the world, which is just ahead of you. Let me conclude with a, with a quote, which I have quoted. Very simple, and I follow this. Work hard. Consistently work hard. Work hard, consistently work hard. Have faith in God and keep working even harder. And I see that success is yours. I want to thank all of you for your patient hearing. I want to thank the college authority and the faculty members for having me. It is my prayer and belief that Tato College will continue to grow strength to strength. It is my prayer that Tato College will keep educating our Naga youths to secure the future. 
And it is my firm belief that together we can build a society which everyone deserved. May God bless all of us. May God bless this autumn 2022 fest a grand success. Koknalim, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for gracing us with your amusing and extremely powerful words of wisdom and opinions and enlarging our perception about a variety of things in our society today and about how we as students can take a part in filling up the holes in our generation. This brings us to the end and the closing ceremony of today's formal program. Which Fancy seeing you guys here in 2022 Tetsa College Autumn Fest. All gratefulness to you guys for gracing us with a huge turn up. Hitting off with our first amphitheater event, which is instrumental music competition under the theme, The Sounds of Culture. We are all ready and anticipating for the competition. Our first performance, we have Pongwang W. Kanyak, History Department, representing House One. I request him to take his time. Respected judges, lecturers, and all my dear friends, my name is Kasho from fifth semester, sociology department. And this is Miss Anoli uh, from first semester, sociology department. And we are here to perform a musical piece Fallen Slowly by Glenn Hansard and Margareta Irglova.
everyone, respected judges, our professors, and all my fellow uh, mates. Today, uh, this piece I've created, keeping in mind the theme uh, as per the um, as per the criteria in rhythm with the mellow fall. So I have used three types of materials here. The first one is cork combs uh, plant. The second one is a leaf that is in a transition from uh, from the, its freshness to being tried out. And the last one is tried leaves. So the inner cord, I have uh, I have hand stitched the material and uh, pasted all these materials on uh, above it. So when it, when uh, when I talk when I think about fall, it reminds me of uh, the transition of life from something fresh or something being jolly to uh, to going into. Um, to maturing itself. Likewise, even plants they mature and they try uh, try try out. So this is a representation of that process. The first here, this flower, it it symbolizes uh, jolliness and silliness. So for me, this represents how we are silly and how we are jolly when we are young. And it goes on to the next stage where we are measured and in a transition period. We are measured enough to understand our problems and we go out of our silliness. And the next stage, the last stage is in our life when we are old, when we grow old, when we age and when we shrink. and this whole piece is something that reminds me so much of fall. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Asula, and from ter fifth semester from psychology department. And she's my model, Masalu, from third semester from economics department. So my inspiration behind this outfit is fall itself. So like every fall, the trees uh, begin to uh, change its color and um, turn into beautiful shades like oranges, yellows, and browns. And the changing fall foliage never fails to surprise us and delight us. We all enjoy the masterpiece that our mother nature has created. Um, it transmits warmth and vitality, brightening our environment and uh, with a touch of elegance. Uh, so this very phenomenon inspired, uh, yeah, inspired me uh, to come up with this concept. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Hyman Brahma. Recently in first semester, uh, pursuing my Bachelor of Computer Application, uh, Tetsu College. And here's my model. I'm representing his... Rep <laughs> so sorry. He's representing my outfit. And talking about the outfit, I have kept the theme on my mind uh, as the theme given uh, in rhythm with the mellow fall. So, uh, Talking about the outfit from the bottom till down, starting I have uh, used some uh, threads and braided and made a neck piece. And uh, talking about uh, the scarf, uh, I have just draped it in a stylish way. Where for the for the shawl, I have uh, used some uh, leaf pattern of uh, beads, and then I have uh, stitched it as well as I have made a brooch. And then where it, where it comes uh, for the base, I have uh, did the same and then I put it uh, some maple leaves. And for the ba uh, bottom, uh, we are going with the cotton linen pants and flip-flop uh, regarding with the autumn season, I have kept on my mind. So uh, we are representing uh, our commerce and uh, BC department. So thank you. Thank you. 
My name is Achongla and my model name is Tayong Lila. We're from third semesters representing the Department of Sociology and Education. Before I go into any further details of the dress, I would like to thank our professors for giving me this opportunity and also I would like to thank uh, everyone who worked hard and finalizing this dress. The, uh, this top, this dress is a two-piece dress. The top is uh, the, for the top, the sleeves are detached with the top and then I went for bishop style, curved at the wrist with uh, pearl buttons. And for the neckline, I went for straight across with organzas draped over it. The organzas here are uh, autumn, florally inspired by the autumn flower and the money with its petals overlapping each other. And the, for the skirt, I went for a wrap slit midi skirt with a cutaway trap and strike over it. It is made out of cream ruffled organzas. And uh, for, for the inside skirt, it is made out of matte fabric, matte fabric uh, in coffee brown, which is enfolded under warm tone criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Im Kong, fifth semester from journal department. Before I showcase my design, I would like to talk about fashion. What is fashion? Fashion for me is self-expression. Fashion is the way to introduce myself without having to say a word. Fashion is something that comes within you. Many people have different attitudes toward fashion. People think that fashion is really important because they want to look good. But for me, it was an escape. Only through fashion, I could able to achieve my desires. Humor is a, a big part of my fashion. You have to be willing to fall on your face a bit to be that fashion rod kill. It's not, it is so much important just than the materials. Fashion you can buy, but the style you possess. The key to style is learning who you are, which takes years. There is no how to road map to style. It's about self-expression and on top of that, the attitude. Style is something each of us already has. All we need to do is find it. Now that being said, now I would like to call my beautiful model, Miss Ronsopini, please. Thank you so much for working to walk. Now shall we please see the profile of the design, please. Thank you. So I decided to come up with this two-piece design. And also, I chose this tainty print and the color because I thought that it will complement all, all the women of the colors. Um, it is very versatile. It can be worn in all the occasions. Just close your eyes and think of an occasion and set the design on your mind. Exactly, that's what I thought, because it is very suiting for all the occasions. Um, since it is two-piece and very versatile, you can also put on a jeans and a top, and also skirt and a top, because it is two-piece. And of course, nothing can go wrong with our traditional touch. This is our chunky traditional attire. Thank you. Now I'll request my model to walk and exit the stage. Thank you. <laughs> 